I didn't see you there. It's Phil here from MTG Kiwi Philosophy. I'm bringing you a new deck tech. Um, something different. I want to take control this time. So I hope you enjoy this. I uh, played it on my FNM night and it was very successful. And this is my blue white aura control deck. All right, peace out. Enjoy the brew. Okay peeps, so let's kick this off. And like any good control deck, you need to be able to establish a board early and then start taking control so your opponents don't have any plays. So in order to do this, we're going to start with our first control card and that is four copies of Baffling End. The best thing about Baffling End is it's a two drop, one white, one other, it enters the battlefield, it's an enchantment so it's a permanent. When Baffling End enters the battlefield, we exile a target creature opponent controls with a converted mana cost of 3 or less. Now, there is a downside to Baffling End, and that is when Baffling End leaves the battlefield, an opponent can create a 3-3 dinosaur token with Trample. We don't worry about that. We've got implications in place for that. So, we'll move on from here. And of course, the next of our control cards we're going to be playing with is... 4 copies of Luminous Bonds. Oh, I love Luminous Bonds. One white, two others, it's a three drop enchantment, so another permanent enchant creature cannot attack or block. Beautiful. Yes, it has a downside where people can still use Hunt the Weak and other things that can trigger like Savage Stomp and Pounce and some of the other cards that allow creatures to still deal their damage or use their activation abilities. But still, it is going to help us get to our end game, and that is preventing the damage being dealt to us. Okay, so that is two enchantments we've got now. So we've got a Luminous Bonds, we've got a Baffling End. Now we're going to need something else, just the next step up, and that is four copies of Exelon's Binding. Ah uh, yes, Exelon's Binding, what I think is the bane of standard. It's a beautiful card, it's three and one plane, it's a four drop enchantment, so what? Another permanent? Yes, thank you. Exelon's Binding enters the battlefield. Exile target non-land permanent opponent controls until Exelon Binding leaves play. Second ability, your opponents can't cast spells with the same name as the exiled card. But boom! Boom Shanka! You love it. There's nothing better than slamming a card down, stopping your opponent from dealing any damage with a creature or a permanent, and not being able to play anymore. So this can stop the profane possessions, this can stop Adana's climb, this can stop anything. All of those lords that are going to allow your players to be able to build stronger creatures. Also, any of those legendary creatures or any of those massive dinosaurs. Man, this card is beautiful and I love it. Now that we've discussed 12 of our permanents that are going to help us control our board, Let's talk about something else that helps us with our control, and that's moving into our draw steps. Yes, and to help us with our first of our three cards that's going to help us with our draw, that is four copies of Secrets of the Golden City. I love Secrets of the Golden City. Two blue, one other, it's a three drop sorcery speed. However, it does have a send, and with all these permanents we're having in play, we shouldn't have any trouble getting to a send very quickly. But if need be, this is still a great card early on to draw us into more of our removal. But the beauty of Secrets of the City is that if we do have a send, we can draw three cards instead of two. There's nothing better than having a couple permanents on the board that are removing creatures from attacking us and just being able to draw and to get us further ahead in the game. It is a beautiful piece of work this, I love this, it is so underrated and such a good card, people don't take it in their drafts and if you're going blue I think it's a perfect card for you. Anyhow, let's move on to our next card and that is going to be two copies of Kamina's Awakening. Once again Kamina's Awakening is a two blue and two other so it's a four drop, it's an enchantment so it's another permanent. But when we have Ascend, at the beginning of your upkeep 
We draw two cards. Our opponent doesn't get any draws. I would rather hold this as a dead card in my hand than let my opponents draw into more cards. The more our opponents draw, the less chance we have to winning. We want to stay on top, we want to stay ahead. So when this comes into play, we should have enough permanence in to ascend, and then every turn we start drawing two cards. And this is just going to get us further and further ahead. So the more drawing, the more removal, the more control we have. Ah, oh, such bliss. Righto, let's move on to our last of our draw cards, and this one is a doozy. And this is it, our big boy. We're going to go with two copies of Azure, the Lawbringer. Oh, I do love the bringer of law. Two blues, two whites, and two others, so yes, there is a little bit of clunkiness involved, but this legendary Sphinx flies and is 6-6, and when it enters the battlefield, your opponent can't cast instant or sorcery spells during their next turn. So we've got a way of making sure they can't destroy it in their first turn and we're going to be able to draw into more and more protection cards and that's what we want. And the best thing I love about Azure is that when it attacks, we can pay an X ability, which is 2 blue, 1 white and X. And if we do, we gain X life and draw X cards. If we have lots of spare mana to do things like drawing or if we need to gain life, we gain life. But, you know, swinging in for 6, you can't ignore that. It's a beautiful card. It is a bit costly and a little bit clunky, but I do love it and it fits perfectly with this deck. Okay, so let's move on to our next part of our deck. What control deck would be without blue counter spells? Am I right? Hmm, yes. Of course, to protect and curve the damage that we're going to be getting to any of our creatures or to protect some of our permanents, that is four copies of Negate and four copies of Admiral's Order. I do love Admiral's Orders. Two blue, one other, instant speed. It also has a raid trigger. So if we're attacking with Azure or any other spells, or if we're attacking with any other creatures, they try to use some, something like Vona's Hunger to sacrifice our creatures. They can't do that because we will stick our Admiral's Order into play only costing one blue, which is beautiful. The best thing about having Admiral's Order is the offensive counter spell. A one drop counter spell. It is perfect. People don't expect this. We've still got a straight up cancel. There's nothing wrong with that. It's a great card. And negate, negate is just as good. The best thing about negate is that we can counter anything that comes into play. Planeswalkers. We can counter enchantments. We can counter removal. It's really, really good. Because after the first game, these guys will want to sideboard in a lot of enchantment removal. But I guess the beauty of it is, if they've gone red, black, or other colors that can't deal with enchantments, they're screwed anyway. Being able to counter a non-creature spell at instant speed to protect our board stake is very important. So holding the gates for the right moment is always key. But once we have... A couple in our hands due to our lovely drawing mechanisms we should be well on our way to completing our victory and speaking of our victory let's talk about our win condition and of course our win condition is we're going to drop in eight hexproof creatures here is the first of our two hexproof creatures soul of the rapids it is amazing how much the Soul of the Rapids is underrated. Yes, it's a little bit costly with a double blue and three others for a 3-2 flying hexproof creature. It's not an easy thing to do. To bolster it, we're going to bring out our second hexproof creature, and that is four copies of Slippery Scoundrel. Now, I love Slippery Scoundrel. It's two and one blue, so it's a three drop, also with Ascend. But when it does have Ascension, as long as the City's Blessing is in play, it has hexproof and can't be blocked. Now, hexproof and can't be blocked. Wow. And this is how we're going to defeat our opponents. Just nibble away at them with the Slippery Scoundrel, with the Soul of the Rapids. We're going to be getting in there constantly, constantly, and just controlling. And then obviously with the drawing, we're going to be drawing into more and more creatures, and we're going to be drawing into more and more control. And this is the staple of the deck. Well, I hope you've liked it. Let's move on to our lands now. Now our lands, we wanted to keep this very simple, and we want to go with 10 islands, 10 plains, and 4 glacial fortresses. It's basically just what we need. We want to keep this deck real simple, and then we want to control it, and then we want to win the game. Okay, so let's move on to our sideboard now. 
I mean man bag, and let's talk about the other synergies we could possibly use in the deck to take control of the game. Okay, so the first of our cards in our man bag is going to be two copies of Access of Morality. Now Access of Morality is a high cost, it's two white and four others, it is an enchantment, so it's another permanent going towards our ascension, however, the ability is, at the beginning of your upkeep, you may have two target players exchange life totals. Okay, the beauty about this is that we obviously might be taking a little bit of damage here and there. And the best thing about that is being able to flip it. And when we flip it and we've got the board controlled, they are in a whole lot of trouble. Being able to flip us from our opponent being on 20 life and us being on something like 12, they flip it. They're on 12 life, and then all of a sudden we have our next attack phase. We're swinging with the Soul of the Rapids and a Slippery Scoundrel. They take 5, and they're down to 7 life. They're on the clock. They're on a 2 turn clock. This is a good card late game for us. Okay, so that's the first of our sideboard. Let's move on to our next card, and that is going to be 2 copies of Gideon of the Trials. Now the thing I love about Gideon is that he's a low cost planeswalker. He's two white, one other, and he has his three abilities. The first ability is gonna help us stall the board, so it's plus one until the next turn prevent all damage target permanent would deal. This is perfect for us. It's zero ability is also good for us. He's on the field. We can send a 4-4 human with indestructible across to swing in, deal some damage. Or we can do the zero ability again and get an emblem and as long as we control the Gideon Planeswalker we can't lose the game and the opponent can't win the game. So it is going to help us out. It does mean that Gideon's going to be a target for a little while but what is better than having Gideon being a target rather than yourself? Stall, stall, stall. Okay, moving on to another piece of work that's really going to help us control the board. And that is four copies of Mirage Mirror. Now the beauty I love about Mirage Mirror, it is a three drop. We can use any of our colors to use it. We can use any of our colors to activate it. So the activation costs two and Mirage Mirror becomes a copy of target artifact, creature or enchantment or land until the end of the turn. So the beauty about this is that for one turn we can possibly tap down one of our opponent's creatures or we can turn our Mirage Mirror into a hexproof creature and being able to swing in as well. It is a beautiful card, it's so diverse. Even being able to turn into something our opponent controls to be able to counterbalance it or even just to be able to control. You gotta love this card. Okay, so let's move on to our next card. And in case you were thinking there wasn't enough creatures in our deck, I've decided to put two of these bad boys in there, and that's Nezzlehall, the Primal Tide. Yeah, it costs seven, it's two blues and five others. This legendary dinosaur is seven seven though, and when he enters the battlefield, he can't be counted. Once again, when he's in play, you have no maximum hand size, and whenever opponents cast a non-creature spell, <laughs> we get to draw a card. Hey, another draw mechanism. On top of that, if we've got all these cards in our hand and we've got too much land or cards that we can discard, third ability, discard three cards and we can return Nezahol to the battlefield from our graveyard tapped. Okay, so let's get on to our last two cards. And the first of our last two cards is going to be two copies of Squire's Devotion. Now the thing I love about Squire's Devotion is we can put it on top of one of our Hexproof creatures. It's an enchantment that costs two and one white, and the enchant creature gets plus one, plus one, and lifelink. Also, it gives us a one, one vampire token. So once again, this one drop vampire is gonna go onto the field, it's gonna become another permanent, that's go towards our ascension, our enchantments are permanent, and we've made our hexproof creatures stronger, and we're gaining life back. So this is a really nice combo. The question is, is you've gotta figure out what you wanna take out, and what you want to put in. That's the thing about sideboards, they can be a little bit tricky, so it all comes down to what your opponents are playing and whether or not you think you need to gain more life. All right, let's move on to the last card in our sideboard, and that is going to be three copies of Settle the Wreckage. Now, I love Settle the Wreckage. It is a board wiper for us. It is two white and two others. It's a four drop instant speed, and whenever we need it, we use it. It doesn't really matter if it's for one card, if it's for two, it doesn't really matter how many creatures we want to remove for it. And the best thing about Settle the Wreckage is being able to play it at instant speed and catch your opponents off guard and being able to remove their creatures. Sure, they can have land. It's not a big deal. If we've got the draw and if we've got the removal and if we've got the control, it doesn't really matter what they play. They're going to have to just take their medicine. 
Okay, well that brings us to an end to another deck. This is my Kamina Control, Blue-White Aura Control, whatever you want to call it. We know how it works. I hope you've enjoyed this. I'm Phil at MTG Kiwi Philosophy. Please like, share, subscribe. Ah, you know what I'm like. Do whatever you want. I'll catch you on the flip side. Ciao.